With the rise in popularity in half-frame film cameras, such as the Kodak Ektar H35 or the released this year Pentax 17, the need for an explanation of what half-frame is is definitely in order. And for people who even have a basic understanding of how film works, still have a really hard time conceptualizing and understanding, so today I'll be answering in full detail what is half-frame, and far more interesting to me, how does it work? And finally, why half frame is such a big deal, especially now. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrew. I love covering all things, both film photography and just being creative in general. So if that's something you're into, please consider subscribing. First, let's start off with some history. So half frame or half 35, isn't actually a new concept. It was introduced as a more consumer-friendly, non-professional method as intended for those people who don't need the bleeding edge of resolution for every single picture. You could wildly increase the number of pictures that you could get per roll of film. But we'll dive into that in a second. So all you need to remember right now is that half frame saves you money. So basically all those different shapes and sizes of film get their name from their dimensions. 35 millimeter film being the most common and relevant for most consumers. So this may seem silly to cover, but again, we're covering everything from the ground up. Film does not have these predetermined frame rectangles that the camera has to line up with when it's shooting. It's actually just a completely blank strip and that rectangle from the opening in the camera is what's scorching that rectangle shape into the Film. So then when you advance forward, the camera very precisely scoots that previous picture over just enough so that it won't be touched by the next picture. So when you buy the most common roll, which is a 36 exposure roll, 36 is actually just a rough guess of how many pictures you could fit on the roll. Film is actually quite long and depending on how you load the camera, you could actually cheese it into squeezing out a couple extra frames. Some cameras will actually stop you from going past 36 as a safety precaution so that you don't rip off the film from the spool on accident, but it just depends on the camera. So when we introduce the concept of a half frame camera, it's exactly that. It's half of that rectangle. So half of 35 millimeters is 17.5, which is why the Pentax half frame camera that was just barely released this year is called the Pentax 17. Kind of fun. Now in the same real estate of film that would have been one horizontal picture, a half frame camera instead will produce two 17.5 millimeter vertical images. So this means instead of 36 pictures that you usually get, you now are doubling the amount of pictures to a whopping 72 exposures. And to be clear, those two pictures aren't taken at the same time. They're completely different. The two main differences with the half frame camera is the size of the cutout. It's just tweaked so that when you advance forward, it only scoots over half as much, but each picture is treated completely independently. They're not taken at the same time. You can take them days or weeks apart. So then you may be wondering if you're cutting the picture in half, wouldn't that also cut the resolution in half? And yeah, you'd be right. But it may not be as big of a deal as you think. And for a lot of people, this will be a game changing money saving feature. Now more than ever, when film costs are pretty expensive and with somewhat limited options for camera choices, a half frame camera is really appealing right now. And Kodak continues to have a playful monopoly chokehold on most film pricing. The unfortunate reality with film photography, as cool and vibey as it is, is that you have to pay to play. Like any other camera, you buy an SD card one time or things like your phone, the memory is already there. You can just delete and repeat. Film is permanent, which is kind of what makes it fun to use. Film kind of introduces this scarcity that is really addicting and fun. And the imperfections of film are what make it so exciting when something does work out. But like we mentioned, we have to pay in order to use and experience this art form, which isn't great because half frame cameras are doubling the amount of pictures that you can get. It's kind of like thinking that every roll of film that you buy is basically 50% off. So am I saying that half frame is superior? Not at all. But I think for most people, half frame's actually going to be incredibly beneficial. You already have to pay for the camera, pay for the film, 
pay for the developing and scanning of that film, then if you care at all about editing, you could consider the software that you're using to be a cost. And after all those expenses and all that work, just to put an image on Instagram where it's gonna crush the heck out of that thing, resolution may be the last of your worries. And half frame definitely softens the blow regarding costs. So that leads us to the next question, what half frame cameras are out there? So like we mentioned, half frame isn't a new concept. So there actually are a lot of half frame cameras out there floating around on eBay. But if you're wanting a camera that was made this year and is just a cheap little point and shoot with basically zero settings and only needs a battery for using the flash, the Kodak Ektar H35 and H35N have been what I've been recommending to absolutely everyone. I've ranted and raved about how much I love those cameras. I own three of them myself and a huge amount of the attention for this channel has actually come from those cameras. So clearly I love talking about them, but for me personally, either of those models permanently replace ever buying a disposable camera again. It doubles the amount of pictures and despite it being half the resolution, it's still sharper than a disposable camera. And since you're loading your own film, you can actually pick and choose what type of ISOs or color types you want, or even black and white if you want. And price-wise, it's actually way cheaper in the long run than repeatedly buying disposables again and again. And it might be better for the environment too, as those disposable cameras aren't reused. So do me a favor, if you liked this video or learned something new, please like the video as it helps push my content out to more people who want to learn more about film photography. Do not forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.